Hello, welcome. My name is Dr. Ruben Rafaelov, Doctor of Pharmacy and Certified NAT Practitioner. And I'm joined here by our, our registered nurse, Jennifer Handy, also Certified NAT Practitioner. And today we're going to be discussing how to strengthen your immune system and protect it against viruses and colds and flus and bacterial infections all year long. Yes, the goal is to uh, maintain a good, healthy immune system Build yourself so that you can fight any type of viruses or bacteria that come your way. And no matter how old you are, if you have a strong immune system, you will not catch colds or flus. And if you do end up getting something, you'll be able to overcome it very easily. So these are going to be 12 different uh, tools that you could use that are um, really manageable that could really benefit your body. The first thing we're going to start with is to quit smoking. Um, so if someone's personally smoking, whether it's um, vaping, cigarettes, hookah, all of these things are very harmful for your lungs, as well as the people around you. Uh, secondhand smoke is harmful to those around you, so, you know, just to be kind to them as well. Um, so now is definitely the time to quit during um, what we're dealing with now as a, glo a global pandemic, but uh, in general. And it's great to give smoking a permanent vacation. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Um, and the next one uh, Dr. Rubin's going to discuss is about eating healthier. So eating healthy is very important because it's what gives our body the nutrition needs to stay healthy. Uh, there are many foods that actually help your body maintain a healthy immune system, which we're going to discuss right now. Uh, it's very important that when you are undergoing some type of immune stress, you avoid eating raw vegetables. If you need to eat raw, soak the vegetables uh, for 15 minutes under salty water and then rinse it off before consuming. This will help make it easier for your body to digest. That's really interesting. Um, also, steaming vegetables also be very helpful to ease the digestive process. Um, just so you know, when we're talking about stress, we're talking about physical, physiologic, emotional stress. If you're working long hours, if you're um, doing a lot of physical exertion, and if you're having a lot of fear or uncertainty, that can lead to also stress in your body. Because remember, your your brain does not, your body does not know the difference between what's going on in your imagination versus what's going on in reality. It still perceives it as a threat, just as equal. So, so um, emotional stress is highly overlooked as a weakening to the immune system. Um, if you're a meat eater, make sure you cook it really well. Uh, that will make it easy for your body to digest. And um, eating frequent meals is also recommended. Normally, if a person eats, let's say, a huge meal, like after Thanksgiving or a holiday party, they normally actually don't feel more energized. They actually feel more tired because it takes a big, puts a big stress on the, on the digestive tract. And again, if by decreasing the stress on, on the digestive tract, we're helping to allow more energy for the body to support a strong immune system. So that's so interesting. So it really makes sense why the food should be cooked because it's already breaking down the food and kind of like taking away one extra step from the body and extra work that the body will have to do to break down that food. Also want to try to avoid spicy mm -hmm. and fried foods because um, that will also cause some digestive problems with certain people. And so overall, you want to try to eat simple and nutritious foods that will help reduce the effects of anxiety as well. Okay. That's good to know. Um, try to consume foods enriched in antioxidants. And ideally, you want to drink about a glass of vegetable juice daily. Any uh, vegetables in particular you think would be important? Or? So we're going to actually discuss that. There's actually a huge list of vegetables mm -hmm. that are very uh, powerful um, you know, lung and respiratory tract supporters. And so we're going to review that list right now. Okay, great. It's not, it's, you don't need to include all these foods, but pick a few that are available for you and try to stick to them. Okay. Um, I'm going to read off this big list. And again, you'll get a full list in the description below the video. Um, some lung and heart friendly foods are apples, apricots, and these are no in particular order, by the way, they're just alphabetized. Avocados, bananas, black tea, Beans and, and bean sprouts are very good as well. Blueberries, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, cayenne pepper, cheese, eggs, 
flax seeds, garlic, ginger, grapefruit, green leafy vegetables such as kale, spinach, cilantro, and dandelion, green tea, melons such as cantaloupe and watermelon, and there's a host of nuts that are also very beneficial for the respiratory tract and, and the heart, almonds, brazil nuts, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, melon seeds, pecans, pumpkin seeds, and walnuts. It's very important that I mention that we want to avoid any foods that you're allergic to. So this is a very comprehensive list that gives you a lot of options, but make sure that you're not consuming anything that you're allergic to. Um, and to expand this list even more, we have some more recommendations. We have oily fish, such as salmon, sardines, anchovies, oranges, papayas, poultry, such as chicken and turkey. We also have pumpkins, radishes, red bell peppers, tomatoes, and turmeric. Nice. Well, there's definitely a lot of options for that vegetable juice that you can make. Uh, and these are definitely the foods that you want to avoid. Um, if someone suffers from any respiratory issues, we're going to go through a list now. Um, you have on there dried fruits. Um, sulfites are found in dried fruits, and they're very damaging for the lungs. Shellfish is not good for the lungs. Peanuts, pistachios, cashews, chestnuts. Um, so these are things to avoid um, if someone has any respiratory issues. And of course, drink adequate amount of water daily. So now I'm going to discuss, first of all, just the idea that water in general allows a person to release toxins. So if someone's not drinking enough water, toxins are in their body. So what's a great analogy for that? A great analogy is looking at the water in a pond versus a river. The water in a pond is stagnant. And what happens um, in, a, in a pond, it starts getting dirty very quickly. Versus in a river, a river water is constantly flowing and the water stays very clean. So ideally, you want to look at your body and you want it to be as clean as a river by drinking plenty of water and it's causing you to cleanse that water, keeping it nice and fresh inside your body. And along with it is just taking out the toxins. Um, we eliminate toxins through um, when we have bowel movements, when we urinate, perspirate, uh, breathing. So it's very important. You know, our bodies are made up of between 60 to 70 percent of water uh, depending on your age. So it's important that that water is nice and fresh and, um, and you know, but, and when can you get that water in is important also and how much. So in the morning, um, to have six ounces when you wake up and six ounces um, when you go to bed. So when you wake up, you're going to have the water, first of all, to help with hydration, but also um, elimination. Now, how much water? It's actually different for every person. You know, sometimes there's always this rule of, well, you should have eight cups of water a day, but people weigh different amounts. I mean, what about a child who weighs 30 pounds? So um, a great mathematical equation would be to take your weight in pounds, divide it by two, and have that amount of liquid in ounces. So if someone weighs 100 pounds, divide 100 by two, that would be 50, and they'd be having 50 ounces throughout the day. Um, this is a great way to make sure that you're having enough fluids, and fluids would include, you know, herbal teas, vegetable juice, like that. And most importantly, fresh water. Yes, definitely, definitely fresh water. Um, so I think that's, that's definitely important. The next item that's very important is healthy elimination. Uh, in order to be healthy, we need to uh, eliminate all the accumulated toxins uh, throughout the day on a daily basis. So upon waking, ideally we should have a bowel movement an additional one to two times per day. Preferably, um, you want to have um, a good indicator if you have a bowel movement an hour or two after major meals. And it's good to drink a glass of water an hour after a meal. Now let's say someone's having difficulty with bowel movements. They could add green leafy vegetables to their diet, fiber, or have um, some well-cooked yam, a few pieces, uh, during their meals. And exercise. Exercise is very, very important for creating motility in the digestive tract. That means to make things move a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. Next, we're going to discuss good hygiene. It's very important to make sure you shower at least once a day to keep your body nice and clean. 
and make sure you wash your hands and especially whenever you come home from any other outside activities where people congregate such as work shopping um, grocery stores etc yeah. wash your hands and even uh, change your clothing to fresh clothes yes that's also very important because mm -hmm. many times the water droplets from a sneeze or a cough of someone can stay in your clothes for, for a few hours um, there are plenty of immune stimulating vitamins and herbs we're going to go through right now we're going to give you a list of a bunch it's not it's not important to have consume all these pick a few that are ready, readily available and that you're going to be able to consume on a daily basis and these can be taken as extracts as teas as pills as or as capsules so they come in various forms depending on what's more convenient for you you want something that you can stick to and that is easily you can be able to uh, work into your regimen. So some of these immune stimulating herbs, I'm going to give you an, an alphabetical list, again, and not in order of importance, um, and you'll have this list also available below the video. Astragalus, basil, chaparro, echinacea, elderberries, eucalyptus, fennel, fenugreek, lemon balm, licorice root, Lobelia, mint and spearmint, oregano, peppermint, rosemary, sage, and thyme are all immune boosting herbs. There's also many supplements and vitamins that would be very helpful because let's face it, as healthy as we try to eat, our foods are somewhat deficient in most therapeutic doses of nutrients. And um, this will help make um, um, some adjustments to and additions to your great diet that you're going to be having. Um, ideally, you want to take supplements in that have less binders and fillers, and you want to try to get as natural sources as possible. Try to avoid synthetic vitamins. You always want to drink a, a tall glass of water, preferably six to eight ounces, with any supplements that you're going to take. This is to help break down and assimilate and digest the, um, the uh, supplements. So this list here is, again, non, in, not in order of importance. Um, you want to consume um, adequate amounts of vitamin C in pill form or supplement form, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, zinc, calcium, magnesium, omega-3 fatty acids, and you also want to take digestive enzymes after every meal. Now we're going to talk about exercising regularly. Um, now regularly could be 30 minutes a day, three times a week, twice a week, but as long as you're really getting that exercise in, it's very important. Um, another exercise besides cardiovascular would be deep breathing. So ideally you would do 10 slow deep breaths once every two hours. This allows you to expel any air in your lungs and with it will come out any viruses or mold that's in your lungs, as well as mucus and phlegm that might be in your lungs because mucus and phlegm is very sticky and viruses and mold could stick to the mold, to the mucus in your lungs and then grow into a, an infection. So it's good for that purpose, as well as if you're feeling stressed, anxious, just take three to five deep breaths and that will really help to calm you and relax you um, during times of anxiety. Maintaining a healthy weight is also very critical. So if you want to uh, try to eat as well as possible, drink adequate amounts of water, um, eliminate regularly, exercise regularly. Basically, all the different tools and, and suggestions that we gave previously help to support um, an ideal weight. And if you're having any difficulty with maintaining ideal weight, adding more fiber in your diet can be very helpful. Also increasing water intake and also increasing exercise in your regime. That's a great idea. Um, alcohol, you definitely want to kind of keep that under moderation because it can cause you to become dehydrated and therefore have more toxins and not allow the body to really be fluid. Now sleep is a huge important factor. Seven to eight hours of sleep ideally. Um, it just gives your body a chance to rest and rejuvenate. You know? Yes, it's very healthy. And, and if you feel tired when you wake up, that means you're not getting rest or rest, and you may actually more benefit even more from a little cat nap in the afternoon. Yeah, 30 to 45 minutes, um, like a little siesta, 
uh, up to three times a week would be really, um, or minimum three times a week would be very beneficial. It actually uh, shows to reduce blood pressure and stress and calms you in the middle of the day. And there's actually been many studies conducted that we're going to reference below the video to kind of explain this in more detail. Um, so it would be very helpful for you to make sure you get well rested and if you need to take an extra cat nap during the day. Let's see, take a look at that. Our favorite topic is maintaining a healthy, happy, and positive attitude. Because when you're optimistic, when you're looking at things better than they are, they turn out always better. Yeah, you can't underestimate the value of being positive and happy and looking at the glasses half full. And um, something to help is doing deep breathing exercises really help to reduce some of these anxieties and worries and fears because they help to get your body in a more relaxed state through the breathing. So during a time of epidemic and pandemic, there's some other special considerations. You want to take uh, uh, steps to avoid infection, such as washing your hands frequently, avoid touching unhygienic surfaces, and then touching your face and your body parts. Mm -hmm. Wear a mask and pair of gloves to avoid contact with unhygienic so surfaces and droplets. Yes. from uh, others near you that may be infected. When you're return visiting a crowded area, like a shopping mall, movie theater, or large gathering or meeting spaces, you always want to change your clothes into freshly clean clothes before you move around and associate with others in your house to avoid spreading any unwanted germs. Um, many times we notice that uh, virus, viruses and flus and infections a lot of times happen in the winter. Yeah. Um, this is because during the winter, the nasal passage is a lot drier and um, it it's allows then for these viruses to breed more. Um, also, viruses live longer indoors because there's less humidity indoors than outdoors. And people are normally um, congregating in closer proximity when they're indoors. And a lot of times in the winter, people leave their doors and windows closed, which also helps to increase the spread of unwanted germs. So it's a good idea to keep the windows open probably when people... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Have a space heater. Um, that's always a great addition while you're leaving uh, your, your windows cracked just to get some fresh air mm -hmm. circulating in. And a, a great way is to uh, just have a space heater to make sure that you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to take in extra vitamin C and vitamin D. Vitamin D in particular because it reduces a lot of uh, those levels reduce a lot because we spend a little more time indoors in the winter time. Mm -hmm. and, and vitamin D is very important to help support your immune system. And we normally get it from being exposed to sunshine. And we all know we all nice and bundled up in the winter and we really don't have much of our skin exposed even when we go out in the sun. Because vitamin D is actually um, absorbed through the amount of surface area that's exposed. So just having your face in your hands is not going to get you much in the winter. So thank you so much for listening to our wonderful informative video. Yes. And please share your comments and experiences and how you're incorporating some of these great suggestions into your daily life. Um, this is again Dr. Rubin and Jennifer. And um, this is to your health. Yes. Thank you. We'd Thanks love for to watching. Hear from you. Thank you.